Please join me in the singing of our national anthem. Please pray with me. Lord God of heaven and of earth, we gather with excitement today and with gratitude and hope. There is a sense of both endings and beginnings, of a portion of life completed, and of a lifetime barely prepared for. We gather to say thanks for paying us the ultimate compliment that you've given us minds of our own, not only that, but set us down in a creation so fascinating, so rich and complex in textures and experiences, in history and ideas and possibilities, that if you've learned anything at all, it is how much there is yet to learn. Oh God, so much to know, so little time. So teach us the essential things, to have a keen hunger for discovery and the sense of curiosity and hilarity we had as children, Teach us to turn our lives outward and never, never to settle for the small potatoes of living unto ourselves. Guide and lead these graduates into places of work and fruitful service that will result in lasting impact and blessing, not only for themselves, but for their neighbors and their communities. May we ever walk in ways of excellence and truth so our lives reflect your glory, for you are God and worthy of all praise. And all together, the people said, Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome. We have assembled today to recognize the completion of academic degrees by the students who are gathered here. These students will soon walk across this stage to receive their diplomas. They will then embark on new paths, face new challenges, and achieve new goals, bearing testimony to the significance of the university on their lives, on the lives of their families and friends, and on the larger community we serve. Commencement is our most significant event as an academic community. It is a special occasion to each of our graduates and the family members who have come to share it with them. We expect this ceremony to last for approximately two hours, and we ask that the audience remain seated during this time in order to allow all to enjoy their own special moments. We also know that excitement, cheering, and general exuberance are natural reactions on an occasion such as this, especially after years of sacrifice and hard work. However, the appropriate place to share your excitement is after the ceremony in the lobby, on the front walk, and on the lawn. And we hope that members of the audience who are here to share this moment with friends and relatives will control their enthusiasm until the ceremony is over. We thank you for understanding the dignity 
and importance of the commencement ceremony to the university community and for respecting those who are being honored. We'd like to extend special thanks to the Edinburgh Symphonic Wind Ensemble under the direction of Dr. Gary S. Grant and the University Singers, directed by Dr. Peter Vanden Honert and to Dr. Katrina Van Drill for leading the national anthem. Please join me in thanking our musicians. In order to emphasize the central role which our faculty play in the intellectual and personal development of our students, President Pogue has designated a group of leading senior faculty members as university faculty marshals. These individuals represent the achievements and contributions made by all of our faculty. Dr. Pogue has asked them to assume a leadership role in helping to create a student-centered environment and encourage university-wide pride and spirit. You will find the university faculty marshals in many roles and venues as leaders and role models in the Edinburgh University community. The university faculty marshals are wearing red robes and medallions provided by the university to signify their special role and are seated with our graduating students. I will now ask that they stand as I identify them individually and remain standing while I introduce the Grand Marshal. The university faculty marshals are Ruth Ann Atkinson, Elementary Education, Ronald Baker, Math and Computer Science, Joyce Berry, Physics and Technology, Roy Brandt, Political Science and Criminal Justice, Fred Cairo, Health and Physical Education, Chuyen Chow, Geosciences, Robert Kogan, Philosophy, Richard Forcucci, Speech and Communication Studies, Francis Gosheski, Psychology, Barbara Grip, Library, Robert Matthews, Music, W. James McHenry, Counseling and Human Development, James Meehan, Business Administration and Economics, Homer Mershon, Foreign Languages, Carl Nordberg, Educational Services, Patricia Nozzle, Nursing, Alfred Riccomini, Special Education and School Psychology, Janet Rogers, Chemistry, Andrew Rusnak, History, Eugene Stoddard, English and Theater Arts, Robert Tamarello, Biology and Health Services, Suzanne Winterberger, Art. Please acknowledge the, the faculty marshals. The Grand Marshal and Mace Bearer is chosen by the President from among the University Faculty Marshals. I would like to ask the Grand Marshal for today's ceremony, Professor Richard Heasley, to stand at this time. Professor Heasley carried the ceremonial mace at the head of the academic procession. He joined the faculty of the Department of Sociology, Anthropology, Social Work in 1966 and currently serves as chairperson of the department. In 1961, Professor Heasley received a baccalaureate degree in social science in English education from Edinburgh State College, where two years later he earned a Master of Education in Social Sciences. He also did advanced studies at Clark University in Massachusetts and the State University of New York at Buffalo. Before he joined the faculty of Edinburgh University, he taught social science and English at General McLean High School from 1961 to 1965. During his career here, he has served on a variety of university-wide and departmental committees. Professor Heasley has served in numerous leadership positions in the community. He has been a member of the Board of Directors of Children's Services of Erie County, a member of the Executive Committee of the Erie Association for Retarded Citizens, a member of the advisory board of Vision Quest, and a member of the Sons of Lake Erie. He was also a member of the board of directors of Economic Futures of Erie County Incorporated and served that organization as secretary treasurer. Professor Heasley's wife, Patricia, is also an Edinburgh graduate and 
is currently a member of the Edinburgh University Council of Trustees. They are the parents of three children, Richard, a 1991 Edinburgh graduate, Andrea Heasley Leffler, who earned the baccalaureate degree from Edinburgh in 1992 and will receive her master's at today's ceremony, and Sean. Professor Heasley and the university faculty marshals represent the expertise and dedication of Edinburgh faculty in service to our students and the community. Please join me in acknowledging Professor Heasley and our faculty marshals. I would like to introduce the rest of the platform party at this time and ask that they stand to be acknowledged. Please hold your applause until all are standing. Trustee Clifford Kip Allen, who will be receiving a degree today. Trustee Patricia Heasley. Trustee Frank Jakovac. Trustee C. Richard Johnston. Trustee William Schultz. Trustee Harold Shields. Trustee Harry Thomas. Student Trustee Ellen Sass, who is also among our graduates today. Dr. Frank G. Pogue, President of Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania. Fred M. Rogers, creator and host of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and a pioneer of children's television programming. <laughs> Daniel Hyam, president of the Edinburgh University Alumni Association. Kelly L. Brandt, a candidate for the Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education and special education. The Reverend Dean Ziegler of Edinburgh United Methodist Church, who has graciously agreed to be with us today in the absence of Reverend Charles Mock. The Reverend Dennis Hendershot of Saints Peter and Paul Orthodox Church in Edinburgh. You may be seated. The candidates for academic degrees will be presented later in the program by the academic deans who are seated in the fr front row. I would like to ask them to stand as I read their names. They are Dr. Terry Smith, Dean of Liberal Arts, Dr. Eric Randall, Dean of Science, Management and Technologies, Dr. Philip Kerstetter, Dean of Education and Graduate Studies, and Dr. Richard Arnold, Dean of Academic Services. Also seated in the first row are Dr. Naomi Johnson, Vice President for Student Affairs and Student Success, Dr. Thomas Hartig, Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Dr. Michael Magavaro, Executive Associate to the President for University Planning, Institutional Research, and Continuous Improvement, Dr. Donald Dilmore, Associate Vice President for University Libraries and Academic Programs, and Dr. Andrew Lawler, Associate Vice President for Technology and Communications. We are privileged to have a number of special guests with us today. Joining us from Clark Elementary School in Harbor Creek, Pennsylvania, is the fourth grade class with whom President Pogue visited earlier this year, and their teacher, Ms. Chris Hargist, who is an Edinburgh University alumna. Accompanying them are Mrs. Myers, principal, and Mrs. Barlow, library aide. Would you please stand and be recognized? Also with us today are students from the Miller School here on the Edinburgh campus, accompanied by Dr. Marion Beckman, the director of the Miller School, and Mrs. Patricia Diebold. Will the Miller students and staff please stand? All of these students will have a special role to play later in our program. Also with us today is the Honorable Tracy Seifert, member of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives.
Presiding over today's commencement exercises is University President Frank G. Pogue. A sociologist, President Pogue holds a bachelor's degree from Alabama State University, a master's degree from Atlanta University, and a PhD from the University of Pittsburgh. It is my distinct pleasure to yield the podium at this time to the president of Edinburgh University, Dr. Frank G. Pogue. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the love. Thank you, Provost Weber. I'm pleased to welcome you to our May 1998 commencement ceremony, a special time set aside to celebrate our collective success. In reaching this milestone, each of our graduates has had special assistance from very special people. And for each of you, there are people you want to thank. Members of our faculty, our parents, spouses and children, brothers and sisters, and our good friends. It seems very appropriate that this commencement occurs on the eve of a very special day Mother's Day, and from all of us, Happy Mother's Day. Now, to our graduates, I hope that Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania, one of 14 public universities in the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, has lived up to the public trust and that we have provided access to an exceptionally high quality education at a reasonable cost. That our learning community has been student centered and that the experience has forged the internalization of the skills and high moral and ethical values as foundations for citizenship and a hunger for further education that we have provided ad adequate opportunities for you, our students, to evaluate the effectiveness of our teaching, our service, and our administration, that we have recognized and responded to the changing needs in terms of technology, of the demographics of our student body, and that your university has connected with external communities to maximize and assure that you will be successful in securing a professional career or graduate opportunities commensurate with your aspirations. I hope Edinburgh University, including myself as president, the vice presidents, deans, department chairs, faculty, secretaries, academic and personal advisors, the cleaning staff, facilities, resident assistants, health services staff, the university police, the dining staff, and all others have treated you with respect and that we have created for you a friendly, trusting, and caring learning environment. I also hope that you have treated us with respect and that you will remember that serving others is the true test of an educated citizen. As tennis, Great Arthur Ashe said, it is not the urge to surpass others at whatever cost, but to serve others at whatever cost. Let us continue to lead others by making the people we serve discover the good things about themselves that they didn't know were there. And let's spread our concept of community and family to the larger communities in our state, our nation, and the world. And by all means, let's stay in touch. Thank you very much.
the university singers will now perform Ride the Chariot, conducted by Dr. Peter Vanden Honert of Edinburgh University's music department. The highest degree awarded by a university is the doctorate. And today we are privileged to be able to confer such a degree upon a pioneer of children's television programming and child development who seems to many as if he has been a member of our family forever. And three generations of Americans need no introduction to our special guest as the creator and host of the PBS television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Fred McFeely Rogers has been visiting with children and their parents for more than 30 years. He is a producer, magician, writer, musician, puppeteer, minister, husband, and father, who trailblazed the creation of television programming that speaks with respect to the concerns of early childhood, not as adults see it, but as children feel it. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is the longest running program on public television. The pro The program reaches almost 8 million households and child care settings each week. Mr. Rogers was born in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and graduated from Rollins College in Florida in 1951 with a degree in music composition. He worked for NBC in New York for several years before returning to Pittsburgh in 1953 at the request of WQED 
the nation's first community-supported public television station. One of the programs he developed for the station was the Children's Corner, a live hour-long visit with puppets and host Josie Carey. In 1955, the series won the Sylvania Reward for the best locally produced children's program in the country. And several regulars on today's Mr. Rogers' neighborhood began their lives on the children's corner, including the puppets Daniel Striped Tiger and King Friday the 13th. And also during this time, Mr. Rogers began to study child development and to attend Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. He was ordained by the Pittsburgh Presbytery in 1962 with a charge to continue his work with children and families through the media. In 1963, Mr. Rogers created a 15-minute children's series called Mr. Rogers for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation in Toronto. The following year, he returned to Pittsburgh where he incorporated the 15-minute segment into a half-hour format. The programs were distributed by the Eastern Educational Network during 1966 and 1967. And in 1968, the series was made available to the affiliates of the Public Broadcasting Service. The same year, he was appointed chairman of the Forum on Mass Media and Child Development of the White House Conference on Children and Youth. He is chairman of the Board of Family Communications the nonprofit corporation he founded in 1971 to produce a variety of materials that encourage the healthy emotional growth of children and their families. There are nearly 700 episodes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and he continues to write and produce several weeks of new programs each season. Mr. Rogers has received virtually every major award in television as well as any other in education, communications, and early childhood. Named Pittsburgher of the Year in January, he received two George Foster Peabody Awards, as well as a Lifetime Achievement Awards from the Emmys and the TV Critics Association. During the past year, TV Guide named him one of television's 50 all-time most important persons. Mr. Rogers and his wife, Joanne, are the parents of two sons and have two grandsons. Mr. Rogers' emphasis on family and human relationships is consonant with our sense of the, of the university as a community, a community of learners, and our concept of the Edinburgh family. His focus on self-affirmation and child development mirrors values that we as a community hold dear. We are pleased and delighted that Fred McFeely Rogers is visiting our neighborhood today. And I am honored to read the citation for Mr. Rogers Award. In recognition of your pioneering efforts to create television programming that addresses the concerns of early childhood through the eyes of children themselves, for your focus on family and human relationships which nourish the healthy emotional growth of children, for your contributions over more than 40 years to the theory and practice of child development which have had a positive and profound effects on three generations of American children and their parents, for your legacy of self-affirmation and individual worth, and for the hundreds of visits you have made to our neighborhoods, the President and, President and Council of Trustees of Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania hereby confer upon Fred McFeely Rogers the degree of Doctor of Public Service and testimony thereof the seal of the university and signatures as authorized by the Council of Trustees 
are here to affix. President of the University, Frank G. Pogue, Chairperson, Council of Trustees, R. Benjamin Wiley, given in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, on the 9th of May, 1998. I would like to present to you this framed copy of the citation which I read a few moments ago as something to remember all of us by. Now, earlier in the program, Provost Weber introduced our friends from Clark Elementary School and the Miller School. Now I would ask their teachers to escort them to the front of the gym, right down here in front of the stage. You can't all see them, but they really look great. <laughs> now, printed on page 24 of your program, you will find words to the theme song of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Now, won't you be my neighbor, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Won't you be my neighbor? Our friends here in the front of the room are going to lead us all and singing Mr. Rogers' theme. And we'll give you a minute to find the words and get ready. Are you ready? <laughs> Maestro, whenever you're ready. Well, that, that was wonderful. Uh, thank you, students from Clark and Miller School. And I am pleased to present the Neighborhood Trolley. 
to Ms. Chris Hargest and Dr. Marion Beckman as a token of our appreciation uh, for your being here today. Please uh, return to your seats for Mr. Rogers' visit to our neighborhood. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rogers. Wow. Wow, thank you, thank you. That was wonderful to hear the children sing. Wonderful to hear you all sing and you all play. Thank you for this warm welcome. It is a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day. But before I begin, I'd like you to know that I recognize that you in Edinburgh have had many days, particularly during this last month, many days that were far from beautiful. You've had an extremely painful time and you've handled it with enormous dignity. I just want you to know that I admire you. I feel that John Gillette's spirit inspires you. The whole country applauds you. And it's a great privilege for me to be with you. I once asked a 12-year-old friend of mine what she thought I should say to graduating seniors in college. Incidentally, I met this friend several years before at Johns Hopkins Hospital, just after she had had very complicated brain surgery. She had to have one whole hemisphere of her brain removed. Obviously, she's had a lot to deal with in her young life already. But here's what she suggested that I say to graduating seniors. Hi, my name is Fred Rogers, and I am here to tell you to do little favors for people, then you, they will like you and feel better about the world, and then they will do little favors for other people. There was a day when that girl's parents wondered if she'd ever be able to speak again. Her doctor, Ben Carson, was always optimistic. As you can imagine, we're very proud of her. In fact, she herself is forever doing favors for others. I guess with the idea that they'll do favors for others themselves. If you saw our neighborhood on television when you were very young, you may have heard me say, I'm proud of you. Well, you can be sure of that again today. I'm proud of what has brought you to this special moment 
in your life. The choices that you have made that has allowed your commencement to be. I'm very much interested in choices and what it is and who it is that enable us human beings to make these choices all through our lives. What choices lead to ethnic cleansing? What choices lead to healing? What choices lead to the destruction of the environment or teenagers shooting teachers? What choices allow heroism in the midst of chaos? I have a lot of framed things in my office which people have presented to me through the years. And this will be added to them, Dr. Pope, what you've just given me. Thank you. Many of them are in different languages. On my walls are Greek and Hebrew and Russian and Chinese. And beside my chair is a little one in French. It's a sentence from Saint-Exupéry's Little Prince, which says, L'essentiel est invisible pour les yeux. What is essential is invisible to the eye. The closer we get to knowing the truth of that sentence, the closer I feel we get to wisdom. What is essential about you that is invisible to the eye? And who are those who have helped you become who you are? My hunch is that anyone who has ever graduated from a college or a university, anyone who has ever been able to sustain a good work, has had at least one person and often many, who have believed in him or her. We just don't get to be competent human beings without, without the investment of a lot of others. I'd like to give you all an invisible gift today, a gift of a silent minute to think about any people you know who have been an important part of your life. Some of them may be here right now. Some may be far away. Some may even be in heaven. Wherever they are, if they've loved you and encouraged you and wanted what was best for you in life, they're right inside yourself. And I just feel that you deserve quiet time on this very special occasion to devote some thought to them. So let's just take a minute of silence and think about the people who have cared about us all along the way. One minute. whomever you've been thinking about, just imagine how grateful they must be that you remember them when you think of your own becoming. One of the last major pieces of legislation which my friend John Hines offered to the United States Senate 
before he died was known as the War Orphans Bill. It was an effort to prevent the Pentagon from stationing both husband and wife in a war zone when they had children at home. Senator Hines didn't want us to take any chances that a young child would lose both his father and mother. He was thinking of children first. His bill was almost unanimously defeated. What does that say about some of the choices of some of our senators? Well, you young people will be the senators and the newspaper writers and the television producers and the teachers and lawyers and the mothers and fathers of the next generation. You'll have the opportunity to participate fully in this world of ours. You'll be the ones who will make the choices. You'll make the difference. I trust that as time goes on, you'll be aware deep inside yourself of the kind of difference you have been able to make. Of course, we don't always succeed in what we try, certainly not by the world's standards, but I think you'll find it's the willingness to keep trying that really matters most. It's not the honors and the prizes and the fancy outsides of life which ultimately nourish our souls. It's the knowing that we can be trusted, that we never have to fear the truth, that the bedrock of our very being is good stuff. That's what makes anybody and anything truly memorable. There's a neighborhood song that I often sing, which is meant for the child in each of us. I'd like to give you the words of that song today. It's you I like. It's not the things you wear. It's not the way you do your hair, but it's you I like. The way you are right now, the way down deep inside you, not the things that hide you, not your diplomas, they'll be right beside you, but it's you I like. Every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new. I hope that you remember, even when you're feeling blue, that it's you I like. It's you yourself, it's you. It's you I like. What that ultimately means, of course, is that you don't ever have to do anything sensational for people to love you. In fact, the outside things of life, the things that television and newspapers talk about most, are not really the important things. It's the inside of all of us that makes us who we really are. When I say it's you I like, I'm talking about that part of you that helps you to wonder and dream and feel for others. That's the part of you that will make the biggest difference in this world. May you and your friends and your families be blessed with lives filled with opportunities to make the kind of choices that will help others. Little favors, big favors, opportunities for you to become the best of whoever you are, 
and whoever your neighbor may be. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. Congratulations. And as one final gift from Edinburgh University. Thank you very much. The student address will be delivered by Kelly L. Brandt, who is graduating today with a Bachelor of Science in Education degree in Elementary Education and Special Education. She was chosen from among a number of applicants on the basis of her written proposal and oral presentation. Kelly is a member of Kappa Delta Pi Education Honorary Society and a Dean's List student. She is the daughter of Roy and Debbie Brandt of Ashtabula, Ohio. Please welcome Kelly L. Brandt. I'm sure that each of us have a lot of questions running through our... Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure that each of us have a lot of questions as we're sitting, through, sitting here today. Probably the most popular question is, when are we going to be getting out of here? But I have asked myself a lot of questions. What happens when we do leave here today? What do we do with the knowledge and experience that we have gained here at Edinburgh? How do we apply it to the real world? I learned the answer to that question as I completed my student teaching assignment at McKeever Environmental Learning Center. Students came to McKeever for three days and two nights. During this training, they were trying to become earth keepers and earn their four keys. The four keys were the K key, meaning knowledge, the E key, standing for experience, the Y key, meaning yourself, and the S key, meaning sharing. As a trainer, I helped the students develop an understanding for the earth and its web of life. During their first day, the students worked very hard at gaining knowledge. Later that night, they earned their K key. The second day, they worked very hard at earning their experience. And later that night, they earned their E key. We have earned the first two keys. We have gained our knowledge, and we have gained experience. Now it is our job to earn the next two keys. Just like the students at McKeever, we are set off on our own to earn the remaining two keys, yourself and sharing. The first thing we must accomplish is to attain that goal that we are after. Then it is our job to share the gifts and talents with others. It is only the beginning for us all. Our roles in life have just begun. I used to think that I was lucky to finally be, be receiving my degree, but it's not luck. It's not luck. It is hard work and persistence. The same is true for each and every one of us. My mother gave me a card one day 
and on the inside was a quote from an unknown author. The quote read, reach for the moon, for if you miss, you will be among the stars. I have fallen, I have missed, but I still am among the stars. We all are, we have succeeded. Then there was my father's quote. Attitudes are contagious, is yours worth catching? My family gave me the most valuable support in the world, love. I wouldn't be here without that. And I've been able to achieve so much. We all have. We have achieved our dream. We have been given the first two keys. Take your knowledge and take your experience and catch that dream. Share your gifts and talents with others all around the world. Best of luck and thank you. Delivering the alumni address today is Daniel Hyam, president of the Edinburgh University of Pennsylvania Alumni Association. He is the 1993 recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award for Business and Industry. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Daniel Hyam. Is this a great day in the neighborhood or what? <laughs> President Pogue, Mrs. Pogue, honored guests, graduates, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to be here with all of you today as we gather to recognize and honor our newest graduates and our newest alumni. To all of the graduates, I commend you on your accomplishments here at Edinburgh University. On behalf of the Edinburgh University Alumni Association and our nearly 40,000 alumni throughout the world, I congratulate each of you and may I be the first to welcome you as an alumni of this great university. We at the Alumni Association represent all of the university's alumni in working to promote and support this institution. The main purpose of the Alumni Association is to aid and support the university working directly with President Pogue. We have, working with President Pogue, we have made a difference in recent years by supporting our university through scholarships, an example, most recently, through the generous support of our alumni, we have created the admissions grant scholarships, which when they take full effect at the beginning of the 1998-1999 academic year, we will be giving 20 full-time students full four-year four, four scholarships. These students may very well not be here without this much needed support. Further, we are currently working with the President's Office in supporting the Baron Fornes Library's need to update their entire computer, uh, com computer system. This technology will allow both today's and tomorrow's students the tools needed to make their studies an easier task. In the near future, the association, with the encouragement and support of President Pogue, is planning to set up a network of alumni chapters throughout the United States. This is an ambitious project, and I would encourage each of you to consider joining, supporting, and becoming a major player in the initial stages of this project. Sometime in the near, near, very near future, the Alumni Office will, by contacting you, asking you to participate in the chapter of your designated area. By supporting your local chapter, you will be forever linked to your alma mater and thus will have the opportunity to continue to, to be an alumni, making a difference in the support of your university. Lastly, as you leave here today, I would ask each of you to consider the reality that you are the greatest marketing tool this institution has to offer. Each of you is a product of the university, and your experiences at Edinburgh will through your words and actions, be reflected on those you meet and socialize throughout your life. Many students, including many of you, I suspect, came here to the borough 
to study simply because you came to know what a wonderful place this corner of Pennsylvania and this campus truly is. Again, I congratulate you on this, your day. It's a day when your family, your friends, and your fellow alumni family gather to express to you how proud we are of you and how happy we are for you. I thank you. We now come to the heart of our ceremony, the awarding of degrees. Will the President's assistants please come to the stage? Dr. Ann Quinn of the Mathematics and Computer Science Department and Kathleen Strasser, Assistant to the Director of the Office for Students with Disabilities, are assisting the President today. Their role in the distribution of diplomas symbolizes the contributions of the faculty to the achievements of our students. In a few moments, the class of 1998 will be receiving their diplomas. You will note that a number of them are wearing honors, stoles, and cords, which signify special academic achievement and were awarded recently at the University Celebration of Excellence. They are described further in your program. At this time, I would like to ask all those graduating students who were accorded Latin honors for highest academic achievement, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude, to rise and be recognized. Will you please stand? Now I would like to ask those graduating students who were accorded departmental honors and those who completed the university honors program to rise and be recognized. Please stand. The Highland Ambassadors is a student service organization which assists the university with special projects and initiatives throughout the year. Graduating seniors who have served as Highland Ambassadors are wearing special plaid stoles created by Ms. Sherry Galvin, Assistant to the President. I would like to ask the graduating Highland Ambassadors to stand at this time. President Pogue, the deans of the academic schools will present the candidates for master's, baccalaureate, and associate degrees. Will the candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Education, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Science in Nursing degrees, please rise. Mr. President, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for these degrees and to report to you that in the opinion of the faculty, they have met all requirements for graduation. By, the, by virtue of the power vested in me by the Board of Governors of the State System of Higher Education, and the Council of Trustees of this university, I hereby confer upon you the degrees of Master of Arts, Master of Education, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Science, and Master of Science in Nursing, with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. In testimony whereof, I present you a diploma with the seal of the Commonwealth and signatures as authorized affixed. Receiving the Master of Arts degree, Kio Maximoto. <laughs> J. 
Julia Teresa Perdomo. Lisa Elaine Reedy. Diana D. Beck. Melissa Sue Carson. Scott A. Craig. Kimberly Suzanne Given. Melissa L. Grimm. Sharon Lee Hornstein. Renee L. Kaiser. Brian Anthony Milligan. Travis R. Monroe. Rebecca Lynn Moss. Vivian M. Obermeyer. Gretchen Faye Osterman. Darla A. Roberts. Christine Ann Stancliffe. Catherine Ann Strict. Ryan F. Van Fossen. Julie J. Williams. Amy Jo Ashenbrenner. Christine L. Bainbridge. Rhonda S. Baker. Cindy Ann Chapman. Marissa Joyce Fife. Julie S. Hilbrick. Brenda Lee Gostecki. Mary B. Hauser. Valerie J. Kempinar. Elizabeth K. Condolas. Michelle R. Lundeen. Catherine Ann Pett. Rebecca L. Smith. Amy L. Sprott. Cheryl Ann Steele. Receiving the Master of Education degree, Amanda Elizabeth Furster. Barbara Ann Jones.
Stacy Wineland Leathery. Amy Sue Mays. Pamela Ann Mesta. Annette K. Hotchkiss. Georgiana Kinsella Weber. <laughs> Andrea Heasley Loeffler. Allison Mary Pluchak. Daniel Lee Daum. David Brent Neufer. Charles Russell Shepard, Jr. Jean Marie Duncan. <laughs> Kathleen A. Greer. Donald William Lukes. Linda Diane Meyer. Receiving the Master of Fine Arts degree. Catherine A. Bender. <laughs> Receiving the Master of Science in Nursing degree. Rhonda S. Anderson. Gretchen Lee Batua. Diane Joy Ginger. Lonnie Lane Heater. Michael Patrick Hill. Will the candidates from the School of Liberal Arts for the degrees Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Associate of Arts please rise. Mr. President, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for these degrees and to report to you that in the opinion of the faculty, they have met all requirements for graduation. By virtue of the power vested in me by the Board of Governors of the State System of Higher Education and the Council of Trustees of this university, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Associate of Arts with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. And testimony whereof, I present you a diploma with the seal of the Commonwealth and the signatures as authorized affixed. Receiving the degree of Bachelor of Arts Jill Suzanne Green. Thomas Green.
John Antonucci. Christy Athey. Orenthal Barnes. Brett Michael Kappa. Kevin Allen Carpenter. David Hamilton Donley. Peter Galinsky. Jeffrey Gresick. Michael Ham. Megan Herbert. Michael Richard Hurtle. April Christine Johnson. Christopher Cush. Kenneth Scott McCrory. Cynthia J. McKissick. Brandy A. Nijinsky. Neil Lee Richard. Thomas Scarpone, Jr. Matthew Wayne Segrin. Edward Robert Selassie. Craig William Stoker. Carrie Lynn Stone. Eric Christopher Stover. Jesse William Thompson. Sherry Lynn Trahosky. Scott Michael Wachowski. Jason Douglas Wallace. Craig Matthew Wiley. Chad William Zielinski. Bruce Lee Furster. Carol Ann Aquaviva. Holly Curtis. Edwin R. Hahn. Jennifer Helene Mikus. Andrew Neese. Jay Schroyer.
Michael Todd Treyer. Emily Lynn Ruthman. Ronald Christopher Allen. Stephen Eugene Martin. Andrew Joseph Reisinger. Ann Baker. Diane Michelle Cremians. Jennifer Ann Hunt. Angela Marie Marino. Stephen Arthur Reisenauer. Themis Anthony Russos. Aaron Gabriel Strasser. Yvonne Louise Thayer. Glenn James Tuttle. Ellen Elizabeth Cameron Toffel. Joseph R. Africa. Shannon Heisey. Tracy Babbitt. Sarah Louise Brown. Michael Anthony Long. Michael Tutti. Brian Paul Wyman. Julia Ann Bedenbaugh. Mary Claire Betzer. Karen Lee Bickle. Andrea Lynn Cooper. Brian Scott Ellis. Jennifer Ann Gray. William Hamill. Monica Ann Laskowski. Maya Yvette Little. Scott Ronald Milne. Lauren Murphy. Mary A. Perico. Yeah. 
Laurel Dawn Puglis. Gary Dean Ratkovich. Benjamin L. Riley. Scott Joseph Robeson. Brenda Renee Telez. Manny Thomas Tracy. Mary Lee Dreisbach. Bonnie Ann Gardner. Brian Lamont Barney. Lisa Lynn Hoffman. Tiffany Joy Wiley. Clarice L. Sunberg. Leslie Joyce Berkeley. Nicole Camille Fisher. Mandy Jean Hamilton. Dawn Marie Hill. Pamela Ann Klingman. Melissa Marie Kosius. Brad Lee Lidner. Kathleen Ann Marino Zuck. Michael J. Meehan. Daria Marie Piper. Kirsty Leah Perot. Julie R. Shannon. Amy Renee Stickle. Mickey Susan Van Kirk. Nancy Elaine Wagner. Pamela Ann Wiley. Christy Lee Wiltanger. Rachel Leah Worstel. Elaine K. Bush. Michelle Marie Schranowski. Christ, Christy Lynn Cicero. Richard Anthony Conti.
Leslie Karen Dave. Michael J. Dave. Brad Allen Davis. Jean Anthony DeFrancesco. Charity J. DeRazio. Danita Marie Douglas. Tara Lee Fidas. Christopher Dean Fox. David Anthony Frazetto. Richard Peter Chimanko. <laughs> Kenneth Paul Harris, Jr. Kimberly Knickerbocker. <laughs> Jolene Ray Learn. Tamara K. Moses. Christopher M. Paul. Laura Jean Phillips. Melissa Ann Poskin. Jason Slider. Christopher Michael Trey. Jennifer Ann Walsh. Receiving the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts. Stephen G. Ann. <laughs> Leah Brokenbeck. Kimberly Jean Burkholder. Laura Michelle Dietz. Aaron Charles Ellsworth. Alan Ray Berry. Kevin David Kelvington. Tricia Marie Kingston. Andrea Lynn Krivak. Jennifer Eileen Malone. Paul R. Martella. Michael Sean Martin. Matthew Goff McIntosh. Diana Renee Mignon. Carolyn Autumn Petrus. Jennifer Reinhardt. <laughs> J. 
James Michael Schoberg. Donna Marie Smithmeyer. Joseph David Strosnyder II. Jonathan Thomas. Mark Allen Thomas. Jamie Ermacher. Paul D. Warren. April Ann Watt. Tiffany Marie Youngkin. Patrick F. Coleman III. Michelle Renee Decker. Melinda Ann Fote. Harry James Hawk, Jr. Harold Holmstrom. Jamie L. Major. Justin Ryan Main. James F. Obermeyer. John Joseph Serkovic. Denny Lee Swan. Janet Lynn.